Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Today we're going to be talking about the top five things that Tesla can do to improve full self-driving, to make it better, to make it easier to use, to make it perform better, and to make it more comfortable for the driver slash operator. Let's jump right in. Starting with number one, we're going to be talking about the path planner, the little dotted green line or blue line, whatever you want to call it, that's coming out of the car that shows the path that the car intends to take. It can go around vehicles, it can go around turns, it can make U-turns, left and right, so on and so forth. So that little line indicates what the intention of the car is going to do, and that gives you an idea of where the car is going. So what Tesla can do here to make this experience better is to make the path planner the width of the car, effectively making it the shape or the size of an actual lane. When you think about humans driving, when we look at a car and where it can go on the road, we look at it in the, in the confines of the width of the car, which is represented by a lane mark. The lanes that you see on the road are the width of a, of a vehicle, the width of a car, the width of a truck, so on and so forth. And so those lanes represent where the car can go, whether it's making turns, whether it's going straight, whether it's going around bends, intersections, off ramps, etc. And so what we were suggesting here is that Tesla make that line just the a lane, just make it a lane, a blue lane, make it the size, the width of the car, the width of the lane that it's in, so that when it's showing you where the car is going to go, you can clearly see the path as it extends around obstacles, again, with the width of the car. You can see it as it makes turns and see what lane it intends to be in, just based on the thickness and the width of that particular line and basically do exactly what autopilot does on highways. When you make an automatic lane change, the lane that the car intends to go to is highlighted blue, and the entire lane is highlighted. That shows you where the car intends to go. They need to take that same visualization and just apply it to path planning in general. Okay, this, I think this would help tremendously for the performance of the car because then you can start to apply rules based on how that lane marking overlaps certain lines. If it goes over the line, if it hits a curb, it'll be able to extrapolate and see what that looks like by predicting out what that lane marking or what that lane indicator looks like going around a turn, going making a sharp left or a sharp right or a U-turn and seeing what that looks like visually is gonna be helpful for the driver as well. So that's the first thing they can do. The next thing that Tesla can do to improve full self-driving beta is to add a bird's eye view of intersections. Teslas have tons of cameras around them. They have lots of data, lots of information at their disposal. But when we look at an actual intersection right now, it's just like the a drone is hovering above the car, the rear of the car, sort of giving you an elevated view of what a human would see. So the same vantage point, the same perspective in terms of the cars to the left and right of you or in front of you. And that's useful, but it's not as useful as it can be. A bird's eye view of an intersection will show you everything that's going on in an intersection so you get a, a good representation of where everyone is in their respective lanes, which lane is a turning lane, which lane is a straight lane, where the lights reside, right? Because sometimes the vantage point that the current view has, some lights might be obstructed, some lights might be turned a different way, and but, but for the visualization right now, they're all facing the same way just to show you what the lights look like. So it'd be better to have a top-down bird's eye view, something similar to this, which would give you the indication of where everything is and give you lots of visibility and give the car the confidence to know exactly what lane is going to turn into when it makes a left or a right. So it's not just making the left or right and then sort of fishing and hunting for the lane or trying to get over to three lanes over or four lanes back or whatever the case may be and trying to scurry to get to its uh, its location, to get to its designated lane. All right, so that's one of the things that they can also do. The next thing I think they can do is a big one, and that is limit the capability of certain features, right? So when you're driving on full self-driving beta right now, the biggest thing, the biggest concern is just that you don't know what the car is going to do. It's very erratic. It can do anything at any time. It says as much in the release notes. And so one of the things that you want to do is have a little bit of peace of mind that there's certain things that it cannot do. For instance, this double yellow line. I want to know and have the confidence that it can never cross the double yellow line for any reason. That's going to give me confidence to know that it's not going to be able to do something erratic like go across the yellow line and go into oncoming traffic, right? Or cross over the curb and hit the curb or hit someone on the sidewalk. 
Those are the things that we need to give the driver more confidence. And when you think about the initial autopilot or sort of standard autopilot that, that can operate on local roads, we know that it's programmed just to go straight. It's never gonna go over the double yellow line. It's never gonna be able to make a turn because it's not programmed to do as much. So that gives you confidence to know what it can and cannot do. Limiting functionality is also one of the mainstays of Tesla in general, because that's how autopilot started. So you have something like stoplight and stop sign control, which when introduced required confirmation to proceed through. That was scaling back functionality for safety, scaling back functionality for confidence. And then once people got used to it, they got used to being able to confirm, confirm, confirm. They got tired of confirming and said, hey, let's go ahead and let that go. And now we released that and now it can proceed through intersections, proceed through stop signs and go through lights on its own. Same concept here. Let's limit some of that functionality and maybe don't take it away completely. Right. So when we talk about evasive maneuvers, when we talk about evasive maneuvers. That's like, hey, there's a car stopped in the middle of the road. The car intuitively wants to go around it, which can mean going over the double yellow line. So I don't, I don't mean take away the ability to make evasive maneuvers, but maybe require confirmation. Yes, I want to acknowledge that the car is going to go over the double yellow line to make this maneuver. And until I give it that confirmation, it's just going to come to a complete stop behind that particular object, obstacle or car. I think that's the better way to do it helps instill confidence, but also allows the car to learn as it gets confirmation in more detail, as opposed to just making its own mind of what it's going to do. And then the driver having to intervene or stop it and press the camera icon. OK, so that's another thing that they can do to help improve full self-driving beta. Along the same lines, there's another thing that they can also do that could help tremendously with full self-driving beta, and I'm surprised they haven't done this already, and that is add voice guidance to full self-driving beta. Tesla has an integrated navigation system, and in that integrated navigation system, it has voice guidance to tell you what turns to take, turn-by-turn -turn navigation. It tells you what turns to take, what lanes to be in, when the next interchange or exit is gonna come up, and it's pretty good, it's pretty solid. I wish they can take that technology, that same voice guidance, and apply it to full self-driving. So that the car actually tells you what it intends to do, creeping forward, waiting for visibility, waiting for a pedestrian to move, whatever the case may be, it can use its voice guidance to tell you, audibly tell you what it intends to do. So now you as the driver slash operator, you know what to expect, and then you can make a decision. Do you wanna take over? Maybe you wanna give it a confirmation, or you wanna let it do its thing, okay? So this is, again, something that can be really, really helpful, really beneficial, and really take full cell driving to the next level just by having that voice guidance. I'm not saying it's an easy task to do, but I think it's a feature that Tesla should definitely invest in to ensure that the car is being very clear with what its intentions are. Finally, the last, last one, uh, number five, here is using visual context to act proactively. Similar to the concept of what I said about the bird's eye uh, view for intersections, Tesla has 360 degree cameras that it can see out of simultaneously, all types of data, radars and sensors and such like that. And it should be able to use the information that it sees to be able to act proactively instead of reactively. Right now, everything is reactive. It sees something in the road, it reacts to it. It sees an obstacle, it waits till the last minute to try to avoid it or, or maneuver around it. I would love for Tesla to leverage the technology to act proactively. For instance, if I need to go straight, but I'm in a turning lane, the lane markings on the ground say turn, the visualization shows them it's saying turn. So the Tesla should never be in a turning lane when it needs to go straight. It should know, hey, this is a turning lane. I'm gonna go ahead and get over into the right lane before I get into it because I know it's coming up. It can see lights, you know, way further down the road or way further away than the human eye can see. So it should be able to use that information proactively, use that visual context proactively to make decisions and put itself in the best position to be successful to get through its route. Right. There's a video going out right now. Shout out to the dude Frenchie of the car on Tesla full self-driving beta uh, trying to go to a roadblock. It's a roadblock section where it sees the sign that says roadblock. I'm sure it knows what roadblocks are, it sees that the road, you know, you can't travel through that road. And instead of seeing it proactively, 
and going around to the next street, it goes all the way up to the actual sign, then stops and then decides to try to maneuver around the obstacle. That's not what it should do. It should actually see the sign from a distance, make a decision then, and then choose to go around way in advance, not, not at the last minute. Right? And I think this would again, help the car perform better. It would also give the driver slash operator a lot more confidence that the car is acting superhuman. I mean, that's the goal of full self driving, according to Elon, is to, it's to make it super safe, superhuman, using this technology to do things that humans can't do, and just to make it, uh, you know, an order of magnitude safer than a human driver. So this is part of it. This is part of using that technology, using that visual context to act proactively in its driving decisions. Okay. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what other things you think Tesla should add to full self-driving beta. Let's get this to their attention. Let's tweet about it. Let's let's shout it out on social media and get this to their attention so they can make these adjustments and make these changes and make full self-driving beta better for everyone. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.